It's a great pleasure for me to be here. This is the last stop of our road movie. Uh, tomorrow we will all ride off into the sunset uh, with tears in our eyes. And um, this has been the most incredible eight days uh, uh, I've had. So um, this is me and my partner, Anna Jürgen Bernhardt. When we set up the office in 2000, or actually this is 2002, um, uh, the, I, I, the, the suit I'm wearing, I can still wear. I'm kind of proud of that, even though it's tight now. Um, this is our office, very European. It's on a boulevard in Cologne, a building, an old building. We have a wonderful team. We are small. Uh, we are a small office. Um, we don't do huge projects, but we we think of ourselves as a as a feel, as an experimental office. Both of us, my wife and I, we both teach. We are professors at university, and the projects we do are mostly experiments in, well, experiments, where we try to push the margins of architecture. Uh, the blue banana um, of Europe, where I'm from, um, so that's this belt from northern Italy to uh, Britain, where basically all the business is done, where all the people live. I know the, the Spanish and the Portuguese will complain now, but um, we do 75% of the revenue of, of, of uh, Europe, and this also has an effect on the urbanism. Where I come from, it's an area of 10 million people. It's not a single town, but it's 40 different towns, but they've all grown together, the Ruhrgebiet. Um, so density is quite a big issue in Germany uh, for reasons of sustainability, for reasons of public transport, and this not only has an effect on urban planning, but also on architecture. So this is Cologne, um, a 2,000-year-old city, uh, the cathedral, maybe some of you might have visited Cologne, uh, maybe some of you were a little bit disappointed that Cologne has not that many old buildings, but you'll see why later on. Um, but uh, it was founded by the Romans, Cologne means colony, uh, Colonia Claudia Ara Agrippinensis, and um, this is what the Romans built 2,000 years ago, very tidy, an orthogonal grid, um, and we still have some remains of that. Uh, so this is called the, the, the Roman Tower, it's one of, of a few, I think we have four or something. And I'm showing you this because um, I'd like to put an emphasis on the fact that there's a lot of resources we inherit from the past, and um, but we should not be too scared to kind of uh, take them as, as objects that need to be uh, put into a museum or not touched. I'm showing you this because in the 19th century, the Roman tower was turned into a residential building. And um, later on, 50 years later, they tore down the residential building again, uh, put up these, uh, <sighs> it's always the same, I don't know what they're called, uh, castle-like uh, top, the castle top. And they built a house right next to it, which looks gothic, but is brand new at the time of the photograph. So they thought about as, as of the city as some sort of museum. Nowadays it looks different. Uh, of course, we have traffic, we have new buildings, but it's still there. And I wish maybe one day it will be something else again. Um, probably not a hospital, but... Um, maybe whatever, office space. So this is the reason why um, Cologne doesn't have that many old buildings. It was completely destroyed in World War II. But people picked up business uh, right, right after the war. So they started um, trade and, and uh, shops, even though there were no buildings. And this is a matter of a couple months where the main shopping street of Cologne um, redeveloped. But it wasn't only the economy that put up, uh, that, that, that's, that, that, that got up again, but um, there were a whole group of architects in Cologne uh, that were very humble, uh, very subtle, they used very subtle architecture. They started to rebuild the city, and they built, did beautiful work. As you can see here, this is Rudolf Schwarz. He did a museum, um, which is now called uh, the Museum for Angewandte Kunst, uh, Museum of Applied Arts. 
And as you can see there, the remains of, of a monastery um, that he built on. So this building is very humble. It has the scale of the medieval city of Cologne. Um, and it doesn't look too spectacular from the outside, but it has a beautiful f floor plan. And, 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 and here, if it would, it, we would have more contrast, you could see that there's a huge staircase here. This is the old cloister. And uh, he managed to not only, I mean, to have a humble outside, but have uh, spectacular spaces inside. Um, he was a very good friend of Mies van der Rohe with a completely different approach to architecture. Um, we started, well, unintentionally, basically, uh, to become political in Cologne because the city government, the city municipality, decided to tear down an arts and education complex. So this was the exhibition hall, this is the the um, arts club, uh, adult education, and um, uh, a library, uh, because they wanted to build a new museum. Uh, awful scheme. Uh, it wasn't the, the, the fact that the architecture was awful that we protested against. It was the fact that, you know, these are resources. And why, you know, it was in perfectly running order. Why tear it down? So what the city did was, um, because of the protests, they, they, they hurried up, to, you know, demolished the building so they would produce facts. And, um, but what they did not do was apply for state funding in time, so they didn't receive the money. Um, so this hall was there for several years, and uh, our um, um, association, we called it the hall, das Loch. A uh, very proud city, three holy kings, the three holy kings are buried in Cologne and this is uh, a myth about uh, the, the holy Ursula and 11,000 virgins sac sacrificing themselves. Long story. Um, we started another project which is called um, Beach Box or Under the Pavement the Beach with an artist, Merlin Bauer, in order to, to get um, public awareness of, of, of what, how you should treat the, the context, the, the, um, the, 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 the city, the physical city. And Cologne is a very proud city of uh, like um, uh, the phenomenon of Cologne. We have carnival, the people are relaxed, as I said, they feel like they're Italian, but they don't really care a lot for the physical city, for the buildings and the public space. So we created this little, it looks like an ice cream parlor I, bicycle, it actually is, is something similar. It has a Le Corbusier wallpaper design in the, the, the heraldic colors of Cologne. And it has, oh, this is still does not have enough contrast. Um, so this is a cooling box, you can have food, drinks, um, uh, and uh, this is the antenna for a pirate transmitter. This is pre-internet, and well, not internet, but well, early on. So you'd have transistor radios. You could spread all the revolutionary news we were uh, broadcasting to the people. So there is a beach in Cologne. Um, there's the River Rhine. The beach is about 50 meters long, and the weather is nasty. Um, so this is where we started. Uh, and it was kind of an experimental use of, public, of the public realm. You, it was not um, legalized, you know. No, you would actually have to make an application in Germany to, to, to have a large gathering of people and to serve food in public space. We, of course, didn't. Um, and we always had people lecturing on the specific place we were on. Uh, this is me in this case. It's a, it's a private development in the city center. Actually, this is on top of a shopping mall. So there's a, it's a mixed-use building. It's, uh, the, I don't like the architecture, but I really like the concept. Uh, we had concerts on top of inner-city highways, and we had the police visiting us. Um, and I'm so glad they did, because this produced this picture. Uh, in, in real life, this was a really nice meeting. They said, what are you doing here? Then we said, well... Uh, you know, we were celebrating uh, the electronic studio of the 
uh, TV station, very famous, maybe you know Stockhausen, the composer. Um, so they had a drink and left again. Um, from this on, we went on to, to work on the project Love Your City. It was an even bigger project. We produced a huge signage, uh, about 15 meters long, and we set it up in public spaces. This is probably the most public space you can have in Cologne. And um, we awarded cities, uh, city, sorry, buildings that we thought were um, not recognized as wonderful architecture yet with this ribbon, uh, in just like race horses get a ribbon. Uh, a ribbon for a building is a little bit bigger. And um, this is the artist we worked with, Merlin Bauer, and this is Bazon Brock um, with Peter Sloterdijk, the most uh, uh, famous uh, philosopher in Germany. The three holy kings again. Um, the building is called Paramente Wefers. Uh, Paramente is what popes and cardinals wear, and this is actually the Prada of, of Paramentes. Um, uh, very beautiful gowns. Well, I don't know whether you can call them gowns. But the owner, the family, the fa it's a family business, and they hired a very good but not very well-known architect, Karl Band. Karl Band. Um, the building is, is very elegant. It's very... Um, sensitive, it sits on the former Roman uh, city wall, so you can read that location in the architecture of the building. Wonderful Catholic details, actually uh, to be Catholic, I'm not Catholic at all, but uh, to be Catholic produces wonderfully made bronze and, and copper uh, things if you're a true believer. This building has already been torn down. It's a, uh, it's a soft drink company, a production company plant. Um, you can't read it anymore, but the, 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 the name of the factory is called Af Africola. Uh, so no one has ever been to Africa, neither the owners nor the, nor the producers, but it sounded very exotic. Uh, this is the office of the owner. A wonderful building torn down is, will be replaced now with a generic uh, hotel architecture. Maybe the most important building uh, we threw ourselves in front of to kind of protect it from uh, the city government was they decided to tear down the opera house and this is the opera house built after the war because the old opera was destroyed. This is the theater um, and wanted to replace it with a shopping mall. They had a developer and wanted to put the opera kind of Sydney-like on the bank of the River Rhine. I mean, the Rhine is not the Sydney Bay, and I don't know whether you easily find another Utzon uh, for a good opera house. And you had one, which is a wonderful architecture from the inside, spectacular. The outside is a little uh, clumsy, you would say, but it's, I think it's a beautiful kind of clumsiness. And so here we are with our signage again. We approached it quickly. Got a lot of artists photographing the building. Uh, this is Albrecht Fuchs, one of the most uh, important photographers in Germany. Um, funny enough, the government then decided, okay, we're not going to tear down the opera house, but we are tearing down the theater for whatever reason. Because the lot would have been too small for a shopping mall, but they just wouldn't want to give in. But then something really horrible happened. Uh, we have a, the city archive, which is this bunker-like building. It contained um, 76, 72 kilometers of shelves of documents of the 2,000-year history of Cologne. And what happened? Uh, they were building a new subway line right next to it, and um, they messed it up. So the 2,000 years of history fell into the hole of the subway construction site. Uh, tragically, two people died, and we now have, have uh, hills of debris of historical documents, uh, which, of course, the city officials say, oh, we will restore them, but um, serious calculations think it will take maybe 600 years to get, you know, the pieces and bits are this, this big, and they got wet, 
So it's not very good for, um, for Franz from Assisi uh, handwriting. Um, this is a project I did together with Urs Füssler. I was teaching at the University of uh, Wuppertal, and Wuppertal is one of my favorite cities. It's absolutely fantastic. It was super rich at the turn of the century, 19, at the end of the 19th century. Bayer was founded there. Uh, lots of money, so build a monorail system, has a, have a really dense city, it's, it's in a valley. And, um, well, things nowadays are not as fortunate as they were a hundred years ago, so the industry has declined, there's some um, unemployment there. But we were kind of rediscovering with the students a kind of pride in the Wuppertal, Wuppertal methods. That means to kind of not have clarity, but to kind of mess with context. And this mess, we really promoted this mess as being a very uh, efficient way of, of creating new architecture and dealing with the resources we have. Oops, sorry. Um, so um, this is a 200-year-old building, and this is someone who thought he's Egon Eiermann, and he could just um, add a new uh, extension to the building, and he think, uh, we, I think we, he did a wonderful job. This is a very... Ah, I'm always sorry, I'm pushing in the wrong direction. So uh, one group of my students, of our students, um, did a Photoshop collage, one image, and it's a hypothetical Wuppertal. So Linda picked the smallest courtyard she could find and turned it into a pu public passage. Um, uh, um, Silke um, created this building and she called it solitude, loneliness. And of course there's a certain melancholy in using old materials, in using things that seem to have failed but they don't give up, you know, that uh, things are still growing and moving on and there will be a new future for Wuppertal, we believe. The saddest building on earth um, Philip Schläger picked it, awful building, ugly as hell, uh, but um, it has this strange glass roof on the back, and who on earth would stick a glass roof on such an ugly building? And Philip found out it was a lumber yard once, so the lumber was stacked in this uh, uh, um, prefab uh, concrete frame, and then it's also a sad story. Um, there was state funding for uh, uh, refugee asylums. Uh, so this, the owner of that building spent about five euros, uh, put in some plastic windows and some cheesy wall, st stored the refugees there. As soon as the funding went out, the building went empty. So what to do with such a sad story? Um, turn it into a nice and beautiful story. First, do a wonderful drawing that you could see if there would be more to contrast. But, um, so, uh, um, Wuppertal is a very religious uh, uh, city, um, Protestants, and um, why not have a church uh, with a church spire, with a campanile, and then uh, duplicate the building to, to get the social center of the church and um, have uh, the, the church. <laughs> and um, we made it to the Venice Biennale with this project uh, because the German pavilion's motto was uh, reuse, recy reduce, reuse, recycle, RRR. And somehow they got to know what we were doing. We, we had an interview, uh, we had a nice article in a, a scientific journal. And so they stuck our, you know, sad little parking lot onto the German pavilion, and um, uh, so the, the German pavilion was all about uh, using contextual buildings. I think I, I will run through this project really quickly just to show, now we're moving to our practice from university to our practice. Um, of course we have, not everything was destroyed in Germany, a lot of things uh, got saved. Uh, so this is a cooperative housing for railroad workers. Uh, turn of the century, actually won a prize at the World Exhibition in Paris in 1900 uh, for uh, smart floor plans. 
Um, it was the last building in its original state, um, so it, it's a landmark building. Uh, the neighbors, as you can see, have altered it. This is all painted. It's not real exposed brick. It's, you know, it's, it's poor, it, it, it's a, it's a low-cost building. And um, this is the back, in the back, you know, how did you say in Afrikaans, bling at the front? No, he's... <laughs> yeah, furn blank achter stank. Yeah, okay, so I skip drawings from now on, because you cannot see a thing. Uh, except, as you can see, we tore down some walls, put in a new wall, and these are uh, examples of colors of teeth that when you get a, a tooth replacement at your dentist, he will check what's the color of your teeth and then he will add uh, that new tooth to the other teeth in the correct color. And this was uh, an idea we had. We didn't, well, actually, we wanted to show that we were, we altered the building, and we didn't, we wanted to leave traces and say, you know, even though the colors match, you can see this is a different material. There used to be a wall, and this is a new cabinet. And, um, uh, of course, uh, it, it was all enclosed little walls. And uh, we wanted, even if it's a small building, we wanted to have a vast open space. Uh, and this went as far as using uh, crap, uh, scrap uh, boards from um, scaffolding, actually. Last time I was saying it, it's not cast boards, but scaffolding. We did a kitchen counter with it. And uh, the clients... Mm, except for the fact that they're divorced, are very happy with the building. <laughs> um, a bigger project we did, working in context, is um, the department store Breuer. Uh, about 60 kilometers from Cologne, it's also a Roman, founded by the Romans, a very old little city, 40,000 inhabitants. And this, as you can see, is the Times Square of that city. Um, you know, this is where it's all happening, although this is the market square, it's a former um, castle. I have 15 more minutes, I think I have to speed up. Um, uh, Post-war modernism, built in 1946, of course the building was destroyed in the war, and they looked at Erich Mendelssohn and built a new department store. And when we found it, it was in a sad a state, three floors empty, uh, drugstore at the bottom. And when we were finished, we had it look almost exactly the same. It was not landmarked, but we thought, why would you alter wonderful architecture? Of course, this is now all insulated. It's a really difficult task to add all that insula insulation to an old building. Uh, these are double pane windows, and this is, uh, this is the most expensive glass I ever used in any of our projects. It's a rough bent glass. Um, open floor plan, because it was a department store. No light at the back, well, no windows. And we added another, a new circulation. And what did we do with the upper floors? We wanted the elderly to move into the city center. Again, density, to avoid uh, private you know, car traffic. And um, so there is a new staircase for exercise if, if your hip is still in a good working order. And um, it leads up to the roof, where there is a roof terrace um, that we added. You can also take the elevator if your hip isn't working that well anymore. Um, there they are with their grandchildren. And uh, from the inside, we cut a lot of holes into the building. Um, so we have courtyards in order to ventilate and to get some more light into the deep floor plans of the, of the uh, department store. And every apartment has their own courtyard, even though if they're not on the top floor, but one floor below, and no one can look into that courtyard. So we have loft-like floor plans. This is how you enter from the courtyards. So you leave the, the, the staircase, go outside, and go inside again. James Turrell was uh, one of our mentors for this, um, these courtyards. And they're very light. 
I think they're very pleasant. Uh, uh, the apartments are, you can kind of decide yourself how you going to use them, even though we anticipated a lot of different uses. And I always love to show the, 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 the images of the first tenant. Uh, she's an organist. This is Johann Sebastian Bach. And it was too much light for her. So she placed her um, bookshelf in front of the glass window. And we don't mind at all. I think this is something very important for architects. We don't need all that design bling. You know, we, 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 we think it's the people and we don't want to force them. If they want the most sophisticated whatsoever, they can get it. But if they don't want it, it's okay as well. Um, well, I, I will skip one project because I'm a little bit late. Uh, now we're moving into industrial architecture. As you can see, we are a real specialized firm. We only do one thing. <laughs> um, this is our client. They moved their production plant from Germany to Poland uh, in order to uh, conquer the global market. And, you know, there's an industrial migration towards the east because of the lower wages and so on and so forth. So the context here is that of a former Russian Air, Air Force base with some tin boxes that already produce uh, German sausage, Italian shoes, and kebab uh, uh, for Berlin. Um, our company works in the robotic business, uh, um, robotic components, um, very complicated little things. And the way they are assembled is quite archaic. It's a table, a trolley, and a shelf. Um, so we worked on that production process, uh, on the different clusters of how you can assemble those things, on the flexibility of how to produce things, and uh, we went through many stages and many drawings um, and ended up with a circular shape where most people think it doesn't really make sense to build circular uh, factories. It does because um, the most expensive part of the factory is the shell, the facade and the roof. And um, uh, in, a, in a drum, you, well, uh, you have the least amount of surface to the maximum of volume. Uh, you have to imagine a grid here, a hexagonal grid and an orthogonal grid, an overlay of that. It's really, we really love to, to work on structure and geometry in the office. Uh, we take it absolutely serious and there's some, we were looking for truth, of course. Uh, yeah. Three cores. <laughs> cannot see more. The beautiful German word of Konstruktion. Um, I just need to show this in South Africa, how buildings are built in uh, Poland, uh, minus 10 degrees, doing the foundations. Um, progress is being made. Uh, the steel company comes in and, and, and sets up the, the columns. The, 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 um, um, and by the time uh, the columns are in, on uh, the, the, the snow melts. So we put a lot of effort in the eco ecology and economy of the project because we had not a single cent more than the tin boxes right next to us. Uh, it's a laminated timber uh, beam, 60 centimeters tall, six centimeters wide, a knot we developed. And um, um, this is how it was set up with this ancient uh, uh, Czechoslovakian truck. I really love that one. Uh, the interior is infinite space, but it's naturally lit. Uh, here you can see the structural grill. Everyone is happy. And I, I mean, I'm not joking. They are, because it, it's worth putting um, energy into production facilities because the people who work there feel healthy and they are proud of where they work at and they have the, uh, the feeling that they are being taken serious and respected. Uh, the exterior is a super cheap material. It's aluminum coated bituminous foil. Um, this is the view at night 
and we also use it as a reflector for the parking lot, um, so we don't need any lamp posts. This is a detail of a fire escape door, and um, this is what it looks like nowadays. And um, we participated in, in the International Building Exhibition in Hamburg, which, uh, as a matter of fact, opened last week uh, with uh, minus three degrees, uh, six Beauforts of wind, and unfinished buildings because plastering couldn't be done in the last three months. Oh, six months. Um, we were, the category we, we participated in the competition was called Smart Price Houses. And um, it is a big issue in Germany because the real estate market is exploding, prices are going higher and higher, and even if we don't have a poverty that you might find in uh, Africa, there is a large need for low-cost housing, either it be for rent or um, to own. You just need to, to, to uh, uh, lower the threshold so people can acquire property and uh, real estate. So we went to this uh, social housing complex north of Cologne, um, prefab concrete slabs, 20 floors, not a bad architecture. You know, some of this is really brilliantly done, but a lot of these projects failed uh, because people become passive, things get abandoned, you know, they're not well kept, then drugs come in and criminal, uh, cr um, crime. Um, but we discovered something that we did not expect in this place. Uh, courage. People who take action, who alter something that seems to be absolutely unalterable. And this is, um, this is quite a uh, uh, discovery in Germany. Uh, there are informal settlements. You would not expect that. You might, now after my lecture, you might get a completely different you know, completely off view of Germany. You would think, okay, they have, they're poor, they have uh, informal settlements. Um, this is, of course, only part of the German reality. It's a very old informal settlement. It's about 60 years old. Uh, the German mail delivers the mail uh, on time. Um, they actually now pay for the electricity. Um, the way they keep their gardens is very tidy. Uh, they brought uh, a souvenir from the Netherlands, a wooden wind windmill. Some of them are wonderful craftsmen. They build beautiful sheds. Some of them dream of exotic countries. And I'm, this is the most important building in that informal settlement, because when you look at it closely, it's a very beautiful building, and it's very well done from scrap material. Everything flushes, you know, the uh, color scheme is wonderful, um, it's very functional. Um, there's nothing wrong about this building. It's, it's architecture without architects, but it's much better than 90% of the architecture I see. It doesn't want to look like something. It is something. It's a wonderful garage. So, um, in our project, we looked into Le Corbusier's Maison Domino as a universal system to produce uh, flexible space. And... Um, as you can see, there are different zones of climates around the world. Uh, this is South Africa here, and um, this is where we are. So this means a lot of insulation. This means wonderful uh, sunlight all day, happiness and good food. And um, this, probably Le Corbusier did not anticipate that his system would be used for informal settlements around the world. This is Brazil. Uh, but it's such a smart construction method, just a little bit of concrete and steel for, um, for the structure, and then fill it with a very cheap material that is brick. Um, so you will, you will also find that in Europe, in Greece, and Turkey, and maybe a little bit in Spain and uh, Portugal. So I, our idea was the building, we called it in German Grundbau and Siedler, that means base and settler. So there's a base building, uh, 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 a skeleton uh, with slabs, concrete slabs, and the settler can fill it in with their own house. Um, as you can see, the slab has, has become um, ob 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 
what is obesity? Fat. Uh, for insulation reasons. Um, the setting of, we won the competition. Part of the contract with that competition was you had to find an investor. So it was not a public uh, contract, but you had to find an investor. The location was the worst neighborhood of Hamburg, a swamp, surrounded by uh, uh, highways, social housing projects, and little private homes. And um, so for several reasons, it wasn't all that easy, easy to find an investor, but uh, especially if you said, it's all right if things are not shiny, you know? Things are normal. There's, there's a beauty in something normal. Um, so this is one of our competition renderings. Uh, and we said, you know, don't bother to have beautiful flowers and lawn, just have people live there. I know for you, this is, there's a completely different condition because you would love, you know... Well, um, but I think it's a good thing for Hamburg, which is a very rich city, to acknowledge uh, a kind of uh, humane architecture for the low end of society. It's, um, it's a uh, commercial project, no funding from the city uh, or the state. Uh, that means the developer teams up with a do-it-yourself superstore. They have a contractor build the Grundbau, the base building, and the settler uh, buys the material of the do-it-yourself superstore and gets a loan from the do-it-yourself superstore because banks are a little bit picky financing favelas. Um, of course, this is not a favela. Uh, it's a, for us, it's a very optimistic project of how you can um, apply your own creativity and your own craftsmanship, save money and be proud of what you do. Uh, this is the floor plan, our modification of the uh, Plan Libre and the Maison Domino. These are the uh, service cores, and around these cores you can do very different things. We thought of a floor plan that would have no uh, um, circulation spaces or hallways that are basically lost for other functions. And as a model, this is a uh, a uh, uh, baroque uh, palace outside of Dusseldorf, and um, so you would you would be surprised that low cost housing housing can learn from baroque palaces. But with a system like this, you can pick whatever you want these rooms to be. So this can be a little kitchen, but it could also be a bathroom. And um, so with the settlers, we we were actually run over by people interested in this project and uh, more than 120 people applied. And uh, so in the very beginning, we worked with them on, with this model um, that could be, you know, how they could start configuring these rooms in, with different functions. Uh, there was a whole set of um, floor plans developed. There's also a flexibility of where to put um, your balcony. There's a balcony all around the, the building, but that's not a balcony, but it's a, like a permanent scaffolding. So you can build your own, how, uh, so you can lay your own bricks. Um, as you can see, you could also alter the, the palace floor plan into a, a more loft-like floor plan, even though we didn't like it as architects. Um, we let them do it. You know, you have to be patient with clients. Um, insulation. Yeah, it's always a joke in South Africa if I show this. So <laughs> everyone is in doing their own insulation. So if this, this guy is slow, you still will have no heat loss once you moved in. We produced a 200 pages uh, manual on how to assemble a house yourself. will be published as a book later this year. And so far, only the settlers uh, possess it. Um, and... Um, it goes through all the different uh, um, elements of architecture. So this is an impression of how we pictured them to work, to rest, and uh, if they would all agree on the same floor plan, this would be kind of a... This is like 50s Italy. Um, mm, 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 they were called neo-rationalism. Uh, 
communism collectivity. Great idea. Um, but it's fine if they don't agree, you know, if they just think everyone needs to be different. So I had a lot of meetings with the city authorities because they wanted to know what the building will look like. And I showed them several images. And I said, as a matter of fact, I don't really care what it looks like. And I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, so this is me uh, and someone from my office with the settlers, uh, Herr Burmeister. We are working on the floor plans. And um, one thing that really surprised us, we, I mean, we were looking for this wild building that you know, everyone would fulfill their weirdest dreams. But in these workshops with the settlers, they said, you know, for us, it is very important that it's kind of a sober building, that it's decent, and we don't want to live in a building that looks cheap. So they asked us, why can't you, are architects, why can't you design the facade? Um, and then we uh, developed a concept, even though the windows can be determined by the clients where, where to put them, uh, there's a, a, a plaster we, we picked and uh, a set of elements of how you can configure that facade, um, but it has become an architect's designed facade. Opening of the base building in October, uh, so this is the land rush. Uh, later on, they just ran in and immediately put on their settler attire, and uh, Mr. Burmeister in action. It's again, it's minus 10 degrees outside. I need two more minutes. Uh, huh? So German walls in Hamburg are 40 centimeters thick, uh, thick of um, insulated concrete blocks. Uh, and then on the inside, you need another 15 centimeters of uh, a very light concrete uh, insulation called multipore. And um, in the back, you see a Sauerbruch Hutton building. This is actually the administration of building of, uh, of Hamburg. So they will look onto our building for the rest of their lives. Uh, and the, the head of the department has a beautiful view. And this is how it looked a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. No plastering yet because of the cold. And it will go on during the building exhibition. So one floor, you know, they're not there yet. Uh, but that's part of the idea that it will be an ongoing building process. And that's it for my work. Thank you very much.